All right, hey y'all, Wes Blankenship and Palmer Toms here at the SEC Championship game at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Sorry, I said Mercedes-Benz Stadium. You probably can't hear that. Uh, Palmer, Dogs and Tigers yet again. This game is rarely close when they do play, but a lot of people feel pretty good about the Dogs today. What are you looking out for for the Dogs to start this game? What are a couple key things they have to do to take care of the spread and take care of LSU? Yeah, I think they got to start early. I mean, this is an LSU team that doesn't have playoff hopes to play for. Uh, you know, they're not you know playing for a New Year's Six Bowl in all likelihood. Uh, so this is their championship. We talked about that. They said that this week. Uh, so I think you got to start fast, jump on them early, and, and don't give them much hope. Don't don't leave them any reason to think that they can hang with you. Uh, and, and any motivation to, to you know go win this one late. Uh, if they're still fighting. So I think you got to get Stetson Bennett going early, get this offense rolling. They, they they tend to click their best when Stetson finds those finds it a rhythm early. Uh, so I think that and goes hand in hand with jumping on the Tigers early. So uh, a lot of Georgia fans have been a little frustrated of late with Stetson Bennett um, not throwing it a lot. The offense kind of looking like they're in a shell a little bit, Palmer. Do you think that's an indication of some struggles what has the team been saying about how they're slowing things down on offense a little bit? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a head-scratcher. Uh, the offensive inconsistency, especially in the red zone, has, has been frustrating. Uh, you know, in this same building earlier in the year, they, they put on one of their best offensive performances. Uh, you know, just I, I think that the last couple of weeks, really, if you go back to – I feel like they played all right against Mississippi State, but against Kentucky and South Carolina – not South Carolina, Georgia Tech uh, – they, they had the East clenched up. They knew they were going to be here for the championship game, and the offense hasn't didn't look great in either of those games. I think it was a very vanilla game plan. You saw Kenny McIntosh in the run game get very involved early. Uh, you know, I think part of that is is weather. Part of that is is just natural game plan. They want to get those guys involved, uh, and a part of that is is they didn't want to show anything that they didn't need to. And honestly, I don't know that they will today. Uh, you know, they really don't. At least uh, to a lot of people, it doesn't seem like they need this win uh, with how things are shaking out around the country. They're probably going to be in the playoff regardless of results. So, you know, do you do you show some things? Do you put some things on tape for an Ohio State and Alabama, you know, whoever they end up playing in the semifinal uh, to, to prepare for? Maybe. Uh, you know, you also have a full month to prepare for that opponent and for that opponent to prepare for you. So maybe, you know, Todd Munkin with the offensive ingenuity that he has uh, can dial something up extra special in that month. So maybe you're not holding as much back, but I still think you've got bigger games to play and you're not going to put all your cards on the table today. Talk about uh, Todd Munkin and this, this Georgia offense. There's a guy they have to look out for named Harold Perkins Jr. Uh, a lot of, again, I think Georgia fans are accustomed to just dominating teams. The offensive line the past few games – uh, struggling in some short yardage. But I think when you look at singling out a guy like Harold Perkins Jr., you got to feel like the dogs will have a plan to neutralize or at least get the ball away from that guy in space, kind of like Texas A&M did. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I identified him as a player to watch today. Uh, but Darnell Washington, I think he's huge because of, A, what he can do in the passing game, but B, how involved he's in the blocking game as well in the run game. You know, when you're sending him out on a pass, you're going to have him chipping uh, Harold Perkins. You, you want to get him. He's, he's got to be very important uh, on, on both aspects of the game. So I think he's important. Broderick Jones, Warren McClendon, the offensive tackles, Marius Mims when he gets in there. Those guys are really important because you do want to limit the Perkins effect, the impact that he can have. Because uh, you look at his stats, very similar to like what Will Anderson has done. Uh, at least during his freshman year. Uh, that's a, that says a lot about the kind of player that we're going to be watching today. What have you seen, Palmer? You, you get to talk to Coach Smart a lot. You see uh, how motivated he is for this game. You mentioned that Georgia maybe doesn't need to win this one. But I think even going back to fall camp, we picked up on the fact that Kirby Smart made a, an emphasis on how important an SEC championship would be. And the way the season has shaken out here, they have a chance to do something that last year's national championship team didn't do. So you're trying to not overemphasize it. You have a lot of other goals that you want to accomplish, obviously, if you're smart and these dogs. 
but you see something in Kirby's eye when he talks about this conference championship game, do you not? Absolutely. I mean, he's been a part of a lot of them as a, you know, as, as an assistant in Alabama, as a head coach here at Georgia. Hasn't had the kind of success that you would want to have here, uh, you know, in your home state too. I think they 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 really take pride in playing in this building in front of a lot of red and black, uh, like it's looking like it'll be today. Um, you know, certainly they take pride in that. They really want to win this. They don't really need to win this, but they really want to win this. I think that's pretty clear. Here come the dogs right here. I'll show this before they uh, run out and we wrap up. Uh, injury concerns, Palmer. I know everyone wants to see A.D. Mitchell piece something together here and and get healthy. I don't see him out here right now, though. Have nope. you noticed anything from from him, uh, any word on what his availability might be? No, he was a participant in the, uh, you know, the, the, the you know, dress rehearsal of sorts uh, that they do with the wide receivers out here. Um, you know, Brian McClendon working with the wide receivers in, in shorts and t-shirt, football pants. Uh, he was an active participant in that. Not out here as they start to uh, return kicks, uh, get, get ready for that. And TCU trailing 28 to 20 with seven minutes to go there. Um, certainly playoff implications there. But yeah, I, I do think A.D. Mitchell is going to play today. Uh, I do think he's going to be a factor for Georgia. Marvin Jones not going to play today, not going to be a factor. We've seen him out here in street clothes, uh, got his uniform on and a boot on his left foot. That's ankle injury, ankle concerns there, which leaves Georgia. You know, we talked about LSU's outside linebacker, their stud outside linebacker and Harold Perkins. Georgia needs like, some really strong play out of the, its outside linebacker group, and it's not one that's all that deep with Nolan Smith already sidelined for the season, Marvin Jones sidelined today. Uh, they're going to need some strong play out of that group, especially trying to contain Jaden Daniels, who's limited himself. Uh, you know, it will be interesting to see what kind of an impact he can have as, as both a rusher uh, and a thrower because he leads the team in both aspects for LSU. Uh, but, you know, certainly need some strong outside linebacker play there uh, going up against him and, and some talented running backs that the Tigers have. All right, Paul, we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, I know you got to get back up and uh, get to some written articles, some written work over at dogshq.com. We'll have a live game stream over there. Uh, of course, you can check out the message board as well. $10 a month right now, our deal at dogshq.com. Pretty cool community we have there. Palmer, we mentioned this, man. This is a big game for playoff implications. Whether or not Georgia wins it, I think Kirby and the Dogs would love to be right back here for the semifinal against uh, maybe Ohio State, maybe Alabama. We'll see what happens. The committee will have some decisions to make in the wake of conference championship weekend. Go ahead and subscribe on the Dogs HQ YouTube channel. We'll be live right here immediately after this ball game. Appreciate it.